you know, when, when, when I look around uh, myself, for us as a family, for us as a church, when we look around the world today, we see all that's taking place on the news. We've been through so much. The world is going through so much. And I'm convinced more and more of how much this, this world needs Jesus. How even us as the people of God, we need to stay close to Jesus, but how this world needs Jesus more than ever. And we see clearly in the scripture, we see God's plan, we see the heart of Jesus, we see what will take place before Christ's return. And so there's many things ahead, but one thing is for sure. We can go off in many directions, but one thing is for sure, is that when we stay close to the Lord, when we stay close to His Word, close to His heart, He will guide us, He will lead us, He will show us exactly what it is that He requires of us in these days. And so I really wanted to just share with us about the fact that for us as Christians, we have a life to live, but we also have a message to share. And we can't take one without the other, but the two need to move in parallel. And that's our Christian life. That's what we see in the scriptures. That's what we see these great men of God having done, their, their reality, their experience. And that's what God is calling us to as well. And the problem in that, if I can say, is, is to, not just the problem, but the challenge to us as Christians, is that we can face two things. And two things which I think are, are, are things we really need to be aware of in this world today. And the first is religion, and the second is the world that we are living in, and the spirit of this world. Now when we look at religion, we can see that when we're going about our everyday Christian life, we may know our Bibles, we may go to meetings, we may do the things that we need to do or that we think are important to do. We can become technical and we can go through the motions. But even as I was saying earlier that we need to stay close to Jesus, but when we get into that religious state, we, we all of a sudden lose contact with the heart of Jesus. We lose contact with that sensitivity in the Spirit. We lose contact with the, the life of the Spirit. And so that's where the Lord is wanting to keep us. And that is where we need to stay at this time. Because if we do not, we can start to go in a very different direction. We can get, start to get caught up in many things that our mind can reason about. And many things that we can be fed. But how God is not calling us to religion. But He's calling us to that life in the Spirit. He's calling us to be used by His Holy Spirit. And so that's the direction He wants to bring us into. Now, the other danger that I was talking about was the danger of this world. And you see, the, the, the reason why is because this world can offer us so many things. We are bombarded daily with things that, that, that affect our flesh, that, that bring our flesh to life, that can gain our attention, that we like, that can take our time. And so the, the spirit of this world can come and, and take a hold of us. And all of a sudden... As, as, as our hearts are won by the spirit of the world, we can also then, again, take a different direction. And we move away from the things of God. We move away from the things of the spirit because all of a sudden we are fulfilling those lusts of the flesh. We are fulfilling those things that our flesh is asking of us, is desiring. And you see, it's, it's, a, it's a great danger. It's something we have to be so careful of. But when we stay close to Jesus... When we stay close to Him, when we are following after His heart, these, things, these dangers will, be no, will no longer be dangers to us. But we need to stay close to Him. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a little encouragement as we get started. Because there are, are, are many things that can, that can take our hearts. But the Lord is wanting to win our hearts at, in this time and to really lead us into deeper things that He has for us. And so if we can open up our Bibles in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. And this is a, a, a scripture which I, I really love because we, you know, in, in many of the epistles that we read, we, we, we feel the heart of Paul. We see the, the great love that he has for the people of God. We see the, the revelation that God gives to him. But not only that, we see those, those relationships that are built and those relationships are true and real, and it's something powerful. And so we're going to have a look. So it's 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verse 5. 
And we're going to read to verse 8. And yeah, he says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but in power, in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. I mean, what an amazing thing that Paul wrote here to the, to the Thessalonians. I would love for Paul to, to have written something about, uh, you know, if I was in a local church, to have written something about our church in such a way, or written to us in such a way. And so if we back up now, <clears throat> we go to verse 5. Paul says something very interesting. Well, he says a few very interesting things here, which we're going to look at. And in verse 5, he says, for our gospel. Our gospel. Now, when he says our gospel, what does he mean by our gospel? Surely it's the gospel. But he says our gospel. And so when he says our, he's talking about himself, Sylvanus, and Timothy. That was the team. That was... It was the three of them that were writing to this church. And he says, our gospel. Now, when he's saying our gospel, he's talking about their very lives. He's talking about the very reality of what they were living in their relationship with Jesus Christ. What Christ had done in their lives. And they took ownership of that gospel for themselves. And you see, that's what we need to see. And then he says, it did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. So it wasn't just in word only. It wasn't just the message they preached. It wasn't just what they had said. You know, It wasn't just they had great meetings and, and it was a great teaching. But he says in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. <clears throat> but here he says, he links the two things and he says, as you know. What kind of men we were among you for your sake. So he, he links the lives that they were living. He says the people that we were among you. They didn't just come pre preach a message and run off. They didn't just come as, as guest speakers, have a wonderful thing to say, and then they went back to their hotel. But they were with the people of God. They were there. They spent time. They invested in their lives. They were part of them. He says... You know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. It wasn't for their own sakes. It was for the sake of the people of God there. The example that they were. And then in verse 6 he says, And you became followers of us and of the Lord. Became followers of us and of the Lord. Now in, in this, in this uh, sentence here, I don't believe that Paul was wanting to draw the people of Thessalonica, wanting to draw them to himself. As he said, followers of us. He wasn't wanting, wanting them to just follow him, follow that team. But he said, you, you were followers of us and of the Lord. But somewhere through the example that they, that they had, through the, the people that they were, through the life that they carried, the life of Christ, the people could see Christ in their lives. And that was powerful. That's what spoke. And so therefore, it wasn't just... Them coming in word only, but it was their lives that was, were transmitting the power of God. And so he said, you followers of us and of the Lord, having the, received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it, it reminds me as well when he says that of, of how Paul said, um, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. And so he could be bold in saying that, follow me as I follow Christ, because he knew the road that he was walking on. He knew what he carried in his heart. He knew that he was not just wanting to point to himself, but he knew what he carried. He knew the life of Christ that was within him. And so he said, there was much affliction with joy in the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. So now it's trans transferred from the example and the life that Paul and the team lived now over to the Thessalonians. He turns, if you like, turns the light off from himself and now he puts it onto the Thessalonians and he says, 
so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord was sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. And so their testimony was so powerful. The Lord, God was doing so much in them as a local church and where they were, that the Apostle Paul said, we didn't even need to say anything. You were there shining as lights. You were there sharing the gospel. You were doing so much that the word went out. The word was spread. So much took place because of what you were living and because of the examples that you were. He didn't just say you were preaching great things all over. He said in verse 7, you became examples to all. And so that's the power of that life that God calls us to live. That's what he's asking of us. And if we look in chapter, chapter 2 verse 6, he says here, speaking again of, of himself and the team, he says, Nor did we see glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. And so it's clear that Paul was, was sharing with them about how they needed to impart and how they were willing to impart their own lives with, the, with this church and in uh, Thessalonica. And so you, you see it's a special relationship and, and Paul was so very clear in what he was sharing. And you know, God is wanting to build us up in such a way. God is wanting to unite our hearts in such a way. But for us to realize that it's not just about sharing good things. It's not just about the message that we are called to preach, called to share. But there's this life that God is wanting and calling us to live. And so if we also turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 1. Here Paul says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart. And you know, it's, it's, it's a very powerful little passage of scripture here. Because he's saying the people that you are, the lives that you are living, speak loudly. Because when, we look at the, when you look back into history, we see that this town of Corinth, the city of Corinth was a very uh, evil uh, city. There was a lot of things that were, take, that were taking place there that were definitely not of God. And so it was, a, it was a place where there was a lot of prostitution. All sorts of things were, were going on. And yet the people of God were shining as lights. Again, they were shining with the life of Christ. And so Paul speaks and says to them so clearly that the lives that they were then living were speaking so loudly. And that it was not just something like a something on a piece of paper or something on a tablet of stone something that was written that was technical but it was a reality in their lives and so there was no letter of commendation needed to them or from them but it was a life it was a relationship and so this is what God wants to build in his church this is what the reality of what God wants to bring to his church because how technical we can become how technical we can be with the church in the church and in our Christian lives But God is not calling us to be technical. God is not calling us to be technical religious people. He is calling us to be people that are alive in the Spirit. He is calling us to be people that know the things of the Spirit and are led by His Spirit. Mm. And that are living a life that is a great testimony to people around. Mm. Because how many times can we, we just have lip service? How many times do we hear Christians saying good things, but their lives don't match up to it? And it's true that we can make mistakes. It's true that we can fall. It's true that that life is there. 
But what is so powerful is when God is at work within us and that through whatever mistakes we make, people feel in us that there's a reality. People feel in us that there is something so powerful, so beyond who we are as a person. And I know many people that have been hurt because of words that Christians have spoken. They have been hurt because Christians have said many things. And you know, in the same way that Jesus, he said, be careful to try and remove that speck from your brother's eye. When you have yourself have a plank in your own eye. And you see, <clears throat> the reason why Jesus said that was because there was those Pharisees who were, who were such a religious people at the time. They did all the right things. They fasted, they prayed, they looked very religious, looked the part. Yet he called them and he said, you are like whitewashed tombs. Inside you are, you are full of filth and death. But on the outside you look so amazing. Because that's what religion brings. There's that, that facade. There's that outward appearance. But God wants us to cleanse the inside as well as the outside. And so that's where it's important. The gospel comes and it reaches the depths of our hearts and changes us from the inside out. Where our hearts are filled with the love for the people of God. Our hearts are filled with the love of God. And when our hearts are filled with the love of God, when our hearts are attached to the heart of God, we see people in the same way that God sees people. We see situations in the same way that God sees situations. In the same way that Jesus himself, when he saw that woman who was caught in adultery, when everybody wanted to stone her, he somewhere saw something in the Spirit. And at that point, he questioned and he put a challenge to those who wanted to stone that woman. And he said, you who are without sin, you cast the first stone. He didn't tell anybody not to throw stones. But he said, you who are without sin, cast the first one. We need to be so careful about the things that we say. Because it's way too easy to say things when there's not reality in our lives. And that's the danger. It's a great danger that we can have, we can live as Christians because we can do damage to other people's lives. Let's have a look in 2 Timothy. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. And I've been speaking a little uh, a bit of of the life that God is calling us to live. But you know, we need to have the right message. And when we have the right message, the right life, they move together. Amen. Because the right message is the one that Jesus delivered to his disciples. You know, sometimes I understand that God's love for us is vast, is great. It's all encompassing. He doesn't love us because, of, because we are, are great people. His grace is, is His unmerited favor. But at the same time, there were certain things that He said to His disciples which were very clear. And it's this word that He said, which was, if. If you desire to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. He said, if. Which, in other words, if we think, take that thought a little bit further... If we don't do those things, we cannot be his disciple. And so I don't know about you, but I want to be a disciple of Christ. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to grow in the likeness of Christ. And so therefore, we need to follow him. We need to know what that road is that he is calling us to walk on. And so when we read here, we, we, we feel the heart of God. We, we feel where he's wanting to take us, what that Christian life is all about. And for me, it's, it's, it's a call that becomes more and more serious. The further along I go, I realize the seriousness of that call. That truly my life is not my own. You know, there's many times where we can want to take our life back into our own hands. But that's the call of God to us, is that our lives are not our own. We have been bought at a price. 
But, but what, a, what a great thing to know that our lives are in the hands of God. And that He has chosen us for eternity. And so if we look here now in, in 2 Timothy, in chapter 1 verse 13. Now Paul here is talking to Timothy who is a son in the faith. Someone that he trusts implicitly. implicitly. <clears throat> and Timothy, to Timothy, Paul is his spiritual father. He's learned, he's become a disciple of Paul. So in verse 13, Paul says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And so he, he is very concerned with that clear message of the gospel that Timothy holds fast to that, communicates that clearly, so that men, women who he's preaching to, who he's sharing with, are clear with the doctrines of Christ and that life that they are called to live according to that message. And so in, in chapter 2 verse 1, <clears throat> he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And so here we see truly when, you know, when Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. We understand that for his disciples to make disciples, they then also needed to go and make disciples. And so here we see again Paul, when he speaks to Timothy, we see Paul himself. If we say Paul, that first line, you know, so Jesus spoke to Paul. He revealed himself to Paul. Paul was there as a disciple of Christ. But then Paul says, says, what you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. So Paul shares with Timothy, Timothy shares his life, shares that sound doctrine with him. He shares with Timothy. Timothy. So we have Paul, Timothy, and he says, commit these things to faithful men. That's the third line down. He says, who will be able to teach others also? So we have that line, Paul, Timothy, faithful men, and then those men who they'll commit that word to as well. And so we see that going, going all the way down from Jesus to Paul, all the way down to these different men. And when we see our own lives today, we see how the word of God has been preached faithfully, how the Holy Spirit has kept the word of God so that we have it today, and there are also those faithful men who are preaching the gospel, who are living the gospel. And because of that, I am here today. You are there today. And God does not want it to stop there. But in the same way that we read about Paul with, the, with those in uh, Thess Thessalonica, we see the relationship that was there. But we see how the call is also to us today. To live the reality of the gospel in our lives. To share and to preach the gospel. And that those around us, that the word would go out around us. That our lives would speak. That it would not just be words, but our lives would speak as well. And that many would be touched. Because God is calling us today. God has a great plan for His church today and He's calling us. He's calling us to be those co-workers with Him. For all that He desires to do. And you see, again, as, as I was saying earlier, that we can so easily speak. We can so easily say many things. And we need to have the right message. But the danger is, is for us as people, we can learn many things. We can understand many things. Amen. And we can go along in our Christian lives with the things we have learned, the things that we have heard, the good teachings, all these things. But along the way, it can become, it can just be in our minds. We can counsel people. We can give people advice. We can help people. But it's, it's somewhere, it's just in our minds. We are not living it. It's not a reality in our lives. And if I'm honest with you, there have been times in my life where I've asked myself, today, have I truly taken up my cross? Today, have I really denied myself in that situation? There was a time where I needed to repent and I didn't want to repent. And a day went by and two days went by and three days went by. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me and I was resisting. 
But by the grace of God, the Lord showed me my state, revealed to me what I needed to do. But you know, I'm talking of three days. But sometimes that state can go on for a long time. Sometimes we can get into a place where we almost become numb to the things of the Spirit. Because we go through the motions. We know everything. We understand this and that and we, and we slip into a certain lifestyle which can be parallel with what we are speaking. Parallel in the sense that it's, it's not necessarily the same thing that we are preaching or, or calling others to, to live. But God is wanting to challenge our lives. He is wanting to, to humble us. He is wanting to reveal in us the things that He wants to do. And so when we, when we see the relationship here that Paul had with these various churches, he was not someone that was just preaching doctrine. He was not someone that was just trying to tell people what to do. This is a good way to live. This is a good way to do things. But the heart of Paul was to transmit his life. The heart of Paul was to, to speak about what God was doing in him. The work that God was doing in him. The way that God was transforming his own life. Even the struggles that he was having. You know, when we read about this story and, and uh, this, this conversation that Paul had with, with Jesus Christ himself, even with the thorn in his flesh, this is something that Paul could have kept to himself. He didn't have to go and share it with the church, but he did. He shared that situation with the church. He shared that such situation, in, in, we read in 2 Corinthians, but he shared with the church in Corinth. He told them about what happened, that conversation he had with the Lord, that thorn in his flesh. He could have just kept it to himself, but he shared his life. He shared what he was going through so that they could see, they could understand the work of God in the life of someone. The work of God in a man of God's life, but not just for a man of God such as Paul. But for every single one of us, the way that God wants to work in us, the way that God wants to, 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 to test us, the way that God will bring challenges before us, because he's not just interested in, in us knowing our Bible back to front, but about us living what we are reading in his word. And so that's the great challenge of the gospel is that God is calling us to live something real and powerful for Him. And when we do, it speaks so loudly to, to others around us. When we do, it will be a challenge to others. You know, this world is full of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is not just for religious people. Jesus challenged the Pharisees, yes. But hypocrisy is not just for religious people. This world is full of hypocrisy. But let us as the people of God not get caught up in hypocrisy. Let us not get caught up in religion. Dry religion. Because Jesus Christ did not die for that. Jesus Christ died that His Holy Spirit may come for us to enter into a personal deep relationship with Him. To be led by His Holy Spirit that indwells us. And as His Holy Spirit ignites our hearts for Him. As His Holy Spirit revives our hearts in, in different situations, convicts our hearts, leads us, guides us. May that reality be felt by people around. And you know, we don't have to be spiritual people that are floating around on clouds everywhere. But it's something true and real in us that will be felt. There will be that witness that will go out all over. But God is wanting to live, us to live that reality with Him. And for Paul, as well as all of us, we need to know that for us to be spiritual people, we need to allow God to deal with us. Because every day, every single day, myself, all of us included, our flesh is there, our own desires are there, our own characters are there. Everything in us that will draw us away from what God wants to do in our lives. Everything in us that when God is putting His finger on something in us, 
we want to run away. When a confrontation comes, when someone challenges us, when there's a character clash, there are these things that come where God wants to deal with us. He wants to humble us. He wants us to be those people that He's called us to be. And when those times come, we need to be ready. Let us be ready to allow God to deal with our lives. Let us allow Him to do that deep work in us that we may carry about the life of Christ in us. You know, Jesus, when He was before <clears throat> His accusers, when He was before all those people that wanted to crucify Him, He opened not His mouth. He could have defended Himself. He could have called angels to come down and rescue Him, but He did not. And in the same way, there are many situations that God will put before us where we just need to keep our mouths quiet. Where we could defend ourselves, we could try and justify ourselves. But rather than doing that, we just keep quiet and say, Jesus Christ, have your way in this situation. And so let us close as, as, we, as we finish up today's, today's time together and really unite our hearts together for what God has ahead. For us as a church, for us as a local church, and for us as a nation, for the different missions, doors that God will open up. Because there are many things that God has in His heart for, for each of us and for His church, for leaders, for Christians. There are many people suffering, and not only suffering financially, not only suffering in their health, but there are those that are suffering spiritually, that need something, need a touch from the Lord. So let us really seek the Lord for that. And let's put our hands up, say, Lord, may I be that one. Mm. Even as the Lord used Esther, but it may be a time such as this that God wants to use you. God wants to use me. Let us not doubt what God wants to do. Let us not doubt or limit the way God can use us. It can be a word. It can be anything. Any situation, any place we may be, God can use us. So let's, let's trust in the Lord for this time. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We're so grateful to you, Lord, for your work in our lives. We are so grateful for your hand upon our lives. Thank you, Lord. Lord, and as your church at this time, we want to lift up our voices and praise you. Mm -hmm. Lift up our voices and worship you. Lord, we want to trust in you for how you're wanting to use us. Lord, forgive us when we've drifted in to religion. Forgive us when we've drifted into that place, Lord, where we've become dry. But Lord, may you rise us, raise us up in these days. Lord, that we may live the reality of your life, live the reality of your gospel. And that our lives, Lord, may speak. But that you may give us the message to share. Give us that life to live. And that we may be determined. And with all of our hearts, Lord, give ourselves to that. For there are many that you're wanting to touch in these days. There's much that you have in your heart to do. So we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for all those brothers and sisters that you're touching. <clears throat> all those brothers and sisters that you're working in at this time, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Mm -hmm. We pray that you continue, Lord. Thank you. We worship you and we praise you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So it's wonderful to be together today and we trust truly that God has encouraged you, God has challenged you, and for all that God has ahead. So we love you and we trust that you will stay safe and that the Lord will continue to lead and guide you in all things.